Hello everyone, this is Paul from Orthoid Val Pal, and with me I have Nick today. Um, I'd like to just talk about how to tease out the difference between a lumbar spine problem and a hip problem. And uh, Nick, how old are you, first of all? 40 years old. 40 years old. And um, when did this start to bother you? Uh, about four days ago. Okay, and where did you start to develop your pain first? Uh, the pain was in the lower back on the left side. Uh, it was very tight. Could not find a position that was comfortable to alleviate kind of the stress on the spine. Uh, I eventually kind of made its way around to the front, onto the top of my leg, and into the groin area. Okay, so the back pain started to lighten up, but it's now more in Yes, the front. Uh, yesterday the back pain, or early this morning, the back pain started to up, but the uh, leg pain has increased, uh, feeling a lot more weakness in that leg and some increased pain. Okay, so you're a farmer, you do a lot of climbing up on things, and you've noticed that that leg has been a little bit weaker. Are you having any problems with uh, coughing, laughing, or sneezing? No. Any bowel or bladder problems? No. Okay, good. And um, how'd you sleep last night? Not very well. <laughs> okay. Um, and so you went to the emergency department, they did a CAT scan, yes. didn't really find anything. They no. thought maybe some sort of internal issue, kidneys or something like that, um, but um, didn't find anything significant there. It was placed on a, a couple tabs of steroid, and uh, here he is today, he's asking me to take a look at him. So. You know, when you have groin pain, you need to be suspicious that there's something going on in the hip, but it also could be coming from the back. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm just going to do some reflex testing, and what you'll notice here on L4 is that he doesn't really have any reflexes. If I do S1, he doesn't demonstrate any reflexes there either, so we cannot use that as a good diagnostic um, part of this exam. So from there, I'd like to do some manual muscle testing. So we're gonna have you hold the big toe up, hold tight, hold this one up, hold tight, hold it up. Okay, a slight amount of weakness, but he has had surgery for L5 on that side in the past. Um, so I'm not so concerned about that. I'm gonna have you hold the foot up and in. Don't let me push down, good. Hold it up and in, don't let me push down. A slight amount of weakness there, okay? So a possible L4. Um, he has good plantar flexion strength. We've already tested that. We're going to test out his quads here. Hold here. Two, three, four. Hold here. Hold tight. And he gives a little bit. So I'm going to ask you to hold your leg back there. Don't let me pull it forward. L5. Hold here. Hold tight. A slight amount of weakness. Now, can you lift your knee up off the table? Hold tight. Good, and now this one, hold tight. I can collapse him real easy. Now, it's not terribly painful, is it? No, it's just weak. Okay, so he's thinking about it, but it just won't hold up there. So, his, his most significant weakness is his iliopsoas and quadricep area, okay? So I'm gonna check his sensation out. Does this feel the same or different? Same. Same or different? Same. Same or different? Uh, same, slightly number there. Okay. Same or different? Uh, number on the inside. Okay, and how about here? Definitely number on both. Okay, so we're, you know, somewhat suspicious that he may have an L3, L4 herniated disc here, um, but he could also have a hip issue causing him this groin pain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a look at his hip range of motion. And typically, if there was some sort of an intra-articular issue, you would see it doing this. Um, Let's get you to lay right down on your back if you would please. I'll do this all from this side. I typically would be on that side. I'm gonna do a straight leg raise test. And if it was like an L3, you typically don't get this radiculopathy like you do with an L4 uh, or a five or an S1. No problem there. No. Okay, I'll pull back a little bit. Any problems there? No. Okay, I oftentimes will do a well straight leg raise test. No problem there, there's no crossover, or otherwise known as a crossover test. I'm gonna check his hip out now, so I'm gonna put him, I'm gonna try to pinch up that hip a little bit, and he has good motion, good internal external rotation, no problem with that. No problem if I come in here and do that. Okay, good. Now, I'm gonna have you flip over onto your stomach, if you would, please. This is another sign that, you know, if the straight leg raise is not positive, then you want to put them on their stomach like this and flex the leg. So I do the good leg first and I see how far I can get. Tell me when things start to get tight. And you feel that on the front of the thigh? Yes. Okay. Now we're going to do the affected side. 
you can see he's already kind of lifting a little bit. Tell me when it starts to get tight. Starting. Starting right there. Okay. And if I go a little further, a little more discomfort in the front of the thigh. Yeah. So L3s, you know, L3, L4 can typically get worse when you do this. It's like a reverse straight leg raise test, okay? And so we flex the leg and that'll give it more discomfort. So with that being said, you get to flip back over and I'll let you sit up. And my big concern here is that he may have an L3, L4 herniated disc on that side. I don't think he has a hip problem here. He has weakness, which is the biggest red flag. We can't use the reflexes to identify the issue, but he also has loss of sensation around the L4 dermatome also. So um, we're going to see if we can get him on a uh, steroid taper just to see if we can get that inflammation to settle down. We're going to monitor him very closely over the next couple of days to make sure that he doesn't become weaker and that he starts to develop a little bit better strength. We may do some objective measurements with a, a dynamometer to see how strong he is. And we're also going to get him uh, doing some McKenzie extension exercises. As you saw, he was on his stomach, on his elbows, and that was okay, right? That was comfortable. It didn't cause you any discomfort. So we're going to see if we can get him to do that a couple times a day. We've been through this routine before because he had an L5 herniated disc, had surgery for that, and did really well after that. Um, so we'll give him a little bit of time. The other thing we don't want him doing is sitting for long periods of time because what does sitting do for you? Uh, you know, I feel that tension here in the top. It, the pain increases if I'm sitting for too long. Right. Uh, so be more uh, more extended. Like if I was laying back somewhat, it was better. But if you're more sitting or sitting forward, then it really right cut, it pinches that off. It feels like sure. So he gets a little more nerve root compression, causes him discomfort here. So I'm really big on you know getting up, walking, sitting, standing, moving around more often, and um, and we'll see how he does with that. We're gonna give him about a week here. And then um, if he continues to have the weakness and or he gets weaker, we're definitely going to push to have an MRI done of his lumbar spine to see if there's any real significant um, nerve root compression. But it's still early and the body can reabsorb that tissue if it's all really soft and just nucleus pulposus. Um, so thank you all for watching. I hope that you um, enjoyed today's video. Nick, thank you so much for being a demo patient uh, so that we can help people around the world um, understand herniated discs and hip issues better. Um, if you liked our video, please give us a thumbs up and uh, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.